Lego games, they have been going since 1995. I mean, I wasn't even born then, with the first LEGO game being LEGO Fun to Build that released on the console of the Sega Pico, or Pico, I've never even heard of this thing. Researching into it, it's kind of like an educational console and you use a magic pen, that's what they call it, as like the controller. It looks really strange, but it looks class. And ever since LEGO Fun to Build in 1995, there has been a total of 85 games based on the franchise of LEGO. From LEGO Island in 1995, 97, published and developed by the French gaming studio Mindscape. And now with all the recent LEGO games developed by TT Games from LEGO Star Wars to LEGO Batman to Lord of the Rings to Pirates of the Caribbean to Jurassic World, there's so many IPs that have made it into LEGO games. So, sit back, relax, get yourself a brew or a cuppa, whatever you like to call it, even if you're not British, just get yourself a cuppa and let's go over the evolution of LEGO games. Right, so, hello, hello, hello there guys, I am Rugged Eagle, and if you do like what you see, feel free to subscribe, it is up to you at the end of the day, but if you do go to enjoy, please go to drop a like and show some support. Anyway, let's crack on. 1995, we were greeted with the first incarnation of a LEGO game, with LEGO Fun to Build, that released on the console of the Sega Pico or Pico, 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 I, I don't know. Now, the game was designed to target the ages of 3 to 7 year olds. And in total, the game had 4 levels, and they were kind of inspired by the LEGO sets at the time in 1995. They were themed on different things, such as Space, LEGO Castle, LEGO Town, and the LEGO Aqua Zone. But it wasn't until two years later where the big daddy himself came along in 1997 with Lego Island. Lego Island, it, it, it's sick. It's a, great, it's a great Lego game. Literally, the main character you're playing as is called Pepperoni. I mean, if you're not convinced, the first level of the game, you are tasked as Pepper to go and deliver a pizza to a jail. And basically, the inmate uses the fumes off the pizza to melt the lock. Oh... It's class. Now, the concept for LEGO Island was a fantastic idea. You played the game in a first-person perspective, and you was a pizza deliverer, and you basically went around the island, and you could free roll, and you could even customise the island. It was pretty good for 1997. And coming off the success of LEGO Island in 1997 on the PC, in 1998, three LEGO games actually dropped in that one year alone. LEGO Chest, and LEGO Loco, and LEGO Creator. Now, reading up on the three LEGO games that dropped in 1998, LEGO Loco stood out to me the most. You kind of had to develop your own city, and its main emphasis was on rail transport. And coming off the bandwagon of LEGO Island in 1997, which was such a well-received LEGO game, they needed some something else to hold up to LEGO Island, and in 1999, they dropped LEGO Racers. Now, this was the first ever LEGO game to come out on consoles, dropping on the Nintendo 64 and the original PlayStation. And along with that, you could also play it on the Game Boy Color. Now, LEGO Racers, it's literally what it says on the tin. LEGO Racers is a LEGO racing game, and I think it was heavily inspired by Mario Kart, because the first Mario Kart dropped in 1992, and you can pick up power-ups on the tracks and stuff. It's pretty similar to Mario Kart, but just based on LEGO. Now, in LEGO Races, there was also some pre-made characters you could be, and they have some weird peculiar names such as Baron Von Baron, King Kahooka, Johnny Thunder, and you could also create your own character by unlocking parts by competing in races. And overall, LEGO Racers was pretty well received. It got better reviews on PC than it did on the consoles, and in total in the game there were 12 tracks, and there were different game modes, such as Time Racers, Single Race, and Versus Race. And also, not to forget, in 1999 we also got two other LEGO games. We got LEGO Rock Raiders and LEGO Friends. Now, in the year 2000, we actually got six LEGO games dropping in that one year alone, and out of the six LEGO games, there were only really four that stood out. They had a LEGO game based on LEGO Land, and you kind of made your own LEGO Land. There was LEGO Alpha Team, LEGO Creator Kingdom, and LEGO Stunt Rally. Nothing absolutely amazing, and all of these released on the PC. Now, 2001, in terms of LEGO games, was a pretty big year. Two of their fan-favorite LEGO games both got a sequel, with LEGO Racers 2 and LEGO Island 2. Now, LEGO Island 2, The Brixter's Revenge, it gets even more crazy than the first installment with LEGO Island in terms of the plot. 
Oh, I absolutely love Lego Island in terms of their storytelling. It's so stupid, but great. Oh, all right, so get a, get a load of this. The first level of Lego Island 2, Papa Bricoloni tasks the main character Pepperoni to deliver another pizza to the jail and it finds out that the Brickster has been saving the peppers from the pizza and he eats them all at once and he gets such a fiery breath. He melts the lock off again. I don't think it beats Lego Island 1 where he uses the pizza fumes to melt the lock, but still it's stupid and daft and I love it. Now Lego Island 2 didn't get as many good reviews compared to Lego Island 1, but Lego Island 2 was still overall pretty well received. It was very similar to the first game in terms of the gameplay and you could customise the island too. Now along with Lego Island 2 The Brickster's Revenge in 2001, we also saw Lego Racers 2. Now, LEGO Racers 2 were very unique because you actually had more freedom in LEGO Racers 2 and you could explore around. However, there were fewer characters in LEGO Racers 2, but there were more bricks for you to collect to customise your car. And LEGO Racers 2 were the first LEGO game to drop on the PlayStation 2. And then after 2001, there was quite a lot of other LEGO games that did release all the way running up to 2005. We got a total of eight other LEGO games. There was a LEGO football game. There was also a LEGO Bionicles game, which released in 2003 that came out on the Xbox. But hold the line, love isn't always on time. It wasn't until the golden year of 2005 when things really kicked off for LEGO games with LEGO Star Wars the video game. Now, LEGO Star Wars the video game is the true foundation of what LEGO games are built off today. This LEGO game introduced us to the level design that we all know and love in LEGO games. Every single person who played LEGO Star Wars knows the level negotiations inside and out. And then after the success of LEGO Star Wars the video game in 2005, they mainly made this game around the time when the prequels movie were coming out, Revenge of the Sith in particular. And then a year later in 2006, we got LEGO Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. And then a year after that, we got the Holy Grail itself, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga in 2007. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just a masterpiece. From simply starting fights in the cantina with the sound design, I mean the death sounds in LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, they're on another scale of amazingness. Is that even a word? I mean, yeah, I don't even think I need to explain to you why The Complete Saga is so good. And you can get Indiana Jones in the game. Talking about Indy... <laughs> Lego Indiana Jones, the original adventures. I mean, they were on something else back in the day with Lego games. They were pumping them out left, right and centre back in the day. And Lego Indy 1 dropped in the year 2008. And this was when things really got exciting for the Lego game community fans. Because we were always anticipating what could be the next Lego game. Because we could get anything from any franchise. Now for me, Lego Indiana Jones 1 The Original Adventures definitely improved upon the complete side because it added lots of new gameplay mechanics to the game's core. Just for example, in Lego Indy, you could swing from ropes, you could pick up objects, you could also pick up different weapons and throw them. It really did spice up the game in terms of combat along with the sound design. Oh my god, Lego Indy's sound design. It's spot on. But then, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. In the same year of 2008, they dropped LEGO Batman 1, the video game. Now, I remember when I was younger, I used to go to my mate's house and we used to play LEGO Batman 1 on Couch Co-op. God, how old it were back in the day playing Couch Co-op. Everything's online multiplayer these days. Mind you, a lot of LEGO games actually don't have online, which really is disappointing. We need more LEGO games with online. Hopefully, the Skywalker Saga has online. Now, if I were to recommend a LEGO game to someone brand new to LEGO games, I would recommend LEGO Batman 1 because I think it is a perfectly well-rounded LEGO game. It's got fantastic level design, it's got a pretty good hub world for the time of 2008, and it also is just fantastic in terms of combat and sound design, where Batman grips him by the neck and just slams the head on the floor. Oh, it's great. And then, after LEGO Batman 1 in 2008, 2009 came along, and we actually got two LEGO games in 2009. We got LEGO Indiana Jones 2, and the other one, lots of people forget about. And it's a shame, because I actually had this LEGO game on the Wii, and I really enjoyed it as a kid. But before we move on to that, let's just talk about LEGO Indy 2. Now, LEGO Indy 2, it wasn't as well received as the previous lot of LEGO games, but I still enjoyed Indy 2, and this LEGO game actually had online multiplayer, similar to Complete Saga, which does step Indy 2 up a little bit. But anyway, let's move on to the other LEGO game. So the LEGO game is LEGO Rock Band, and it's a really strange LEGO game, but I actually really enjoyed 
enjoyed it. It was heavily inspired by the rock band video games where you play with the guitar, but the Lego one was fantastic. It had up to 45 songs to select, and it mainly was 80s, 70s, and 90s songs, and that's what I love about this game, because I'm a massive fan of the 80s, my favourite band being Toto. Yeah, and it also dropped on the PlayStation 3, and just looking back at it now, you could play as like Lego Queen, Lego David, Bowie, you had Lego Toto, I remember they was DLC and you could play Africa, but yeah, it's a, it's a really strange Lego game, but if you could pick it up somewhere, you'll have a blast playing it, it's really fun. And then after 2009 and 2010, we got Lego Harry Potter Years 1 to 4. In 2011, we actually got three Lego games in that one year alone. We got Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars, and we also got Lego Harry Potter Years 5 to 7. But then 2012 came along, and this is where Lego games evolved once more. This was the year that LEGO Batman 2 dropped, and LEGO Batman 2 really changed the formula up for LEGO games, still following the same level design and all the stuff we love from LEGO games, however, it introduced voice lines to LEGO games. Watch the suit, boys! And along with voice lines, we also got a massive open world city for the first time in a LEGO game, out with the hub world and in with the new open world, and they nailed Gotham City. It was mainly inspired by Tim Burton's Batman, and I love Gotham in LEGO Batman 2. Now, when voice lines came along in 2012, it was really controversial because it kind of split the LEGO game audience because a lot of people who grew up with the older LEGO games really did enjoy the mumbles, whereas the newer generation were really enjoying the voice lines and it kind of split the LEGO game community up. Personally, I don't really matter which one it is. Voice lines, I enjoy voice lines, and I also enjoy mumbles. And along with LEGO Batman 2 in 2012, we also got my all-time favourite LEGO game, LEGO Lord of the Rings. It's just fantastic as LEGO Lord of the Rings. It's a real shame that you can't get it on the newer consoles because they actually did run out of the rights, so you can't pick it up on the new consoles, which is a real big shame. And then after 2012, nothing much really changed because LEGO games nailed the formula and everyone were loving what the LEGO games were with the level design, the character rosters, the open worlds, and they just kept bumping them out with lots of different franchises and IPs and everyone loved them. So in 2013, we got LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, which is absolutely fantastic. We also got LEGO City Undercover, one of the best open worlds in a LEGO game. And not many people have played City Undercover. It's a really unique LEGO game, and I definitely recommend picking it up. And then in 2014, we got LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, which was a bit disappointing in terms of the open world. You might have liked it, I didn't really like it, but it had a fantastic character roster. We also got LEGO Hobbit, one of the best, if not the best, open world in a LEGO game. It's a shame that they didn't finish the third movie, though. And finally, also in 2014, we got the LEGO Movie Video Game, which mainly was to promote alongside the film. But then 2015 came along, and 2015 was pretty special for LEGO games because they pumped out two fantastic LEGO games in 2015. Now, out of those two, one of them LEGO games was LEGO Jurassic World, and this did follow the same formula as past LEGO games, but you could play as dinosaurs, and the soundtrack in the background just made it spectacular. And the other LEGO game that dropped in 2015 was LEGO Dimensions, and this LEGO game used Toys to Life. Now, LEGO Dimensions is an absolute extraordinary LEGO game if you have the money for it. If you don't have the money for Dimensions, it's going to be not one of the best LEGO games. I gotta say, the story was super fun. Alec pulled all these different IPs into this one timeline. It was really cool to see, like, Back to the Future in a LEGO game and LEGO Portal. It was wicked to see them. And my favourite pack in particular being the LEGO Doctor Who pack. I thought that was the best pack by far. Because I love Doctor Who, but you got a lot for your money in terms of the Doctor Who pack. There were like 13 different doctors you could be. Worth your money. And then after 2015, they carried on updating LEGO Dimensions. They did Wave 2 where you could get Adventure Time and E.T. and all of these different franchises. And then came along 2016 where we got LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens and LEGO Marvel Avengers. Now 2016 in my eyes was the year where LEGO games were basically going off one film such as LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Literally, the game is just based on one Star Wars movie. Obviously, The Force Awakens. And same goes to apply with LEGO Marvel Avengers. They mainly made that game to tie in with the new Avengers film Age of Ultron that did release in 2015. 
But I don't think LEGO Marvel Avengers is as bad as LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens, because Marvel Avengers also did the first Avengers film and it did lots of other MCU films. But you've got to bear in mind though, Force Awakens did actually add some extra levels that were pretty fun to do, and The Force Awakens has some of the best DLC packs in a LEGO game. Same with Marvel Avengers, LEGO Force Awakens and Marvel Avengers, it has some of the biggest character rosters in a LEGO game, and they're pretty solid, so well done on that part. Moving into the year of 2017, we got the Lego Ninjago movie video game, which I thought was pretty solid in terms of combat. The combat in that Lego Ninjago game, oh my god, it's really fun to do, and there's even a skill tree in the game. Now, along with the Lego Ninjago game in 2017, we also got Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Now, for some reason, Lego Marvel 2 in the Lego game community is really divided because a lot of people don't like the open world, but a lot of people do really enjoy it, and I'm one of those who quite like Chronopolis. I think Chronopolis is a really fun open world and it's really different and they captured it pretty well I thought. But one thing LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 absolutely nails is the character roster. The character roster in LEGO Marvel 2 is absolutely mad. There's so many characters and the, one of the best things is you can even read up about them and the DLC packs are really strong too. And then finally we move into 2018 where we got the LEGO Incredibles game which I thought was a really fun LEGO game. I just think it's an average LEGO game. However, though, I did quite enjoy it when I played through it. And then we also got LEGO DC Supervillains, which is absolutely fantastic. If you have not played DC Supervillains, definitely go and play it. Yeah, I just want to say, DC Supervillains is really well done. If you have played the old LEGO games and you're watching this video for a bit of nostalgia and you just really want to see what the new LEGO games are about, jump into DC Supervillains. The graphics are fantastic, the gameplay mechanics, you can even glide around like Batman in the Arkham games. I mean, come on. But then we move to 2019 and we got the LEGO Movie 2 game. It's not that good. I mean, it, I mean... It, <laughs> It's alright, it's just not fantastic, and it's not how I would picture a LEGO game, the open world in particular, oh, it's it's just a, it's a little bit bad. Now, for you keen eye LEGO fans, you may have noticed when I was mentioning 2017, I left out LEGO Worlds, and the main reason is because I wanted to compare it to LEGO Movie 2, because they both run off the same engine. Now, I don't think LEGO Movie 2 is that great in terms of the open world. I just think it looks like a knockoff, rip-off LEGO Worlds for some reason. And I really do enjoy LEGO Worlds as a standalone LEGO game, because it's really different, because at the end of the day, LEGO Worlds is a sandbox game. Now, if you're quite a creative person and love building and designing stuff and exploring, you'll absolutely love LEGO Worlds. For example, take this yacht that I built. I built this yacht in LEGO Worlds, and I'm super proud of it. I think it looks mint, along with this modern house. It's, it's good, come on, you gotta agree. But yeah, I really do enjoy LEGO Worlds, except for it can be a little bit laggy on consoles at times, and it really does ruin the game. And that, my friends, is the evolution of all the LEGO games up to where we are now. And next year, or this year, we don't know when it's coming out, we are getting LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Now, if you want to learn everything about LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I'll put a card up there. I've made a 10-minute video and I literally go over everything. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is going to be absolutely nuts. It's going off an entirely different engine. It's going to have around 500 playable characters. It's going to be ridiculous. But anyway, I just want to thank you for watching the evolution of all the LEGO games. And before you go, please go down into the comments and comment which is your favourite LEGO game. And please let me know a memory that you have on that LEGO game. Like me when I was younger with LEGO Batman 1, I used to go around to my friend's house and play co-op. Great memories, and I would love to hear your memories and the nostalgia we all share for these fantastic LEGO games. Well then, if you are new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. At the end of the video, I will have a playlist with lots of other LEGO game videos I have done. I have ranked all the character rosters, I have ranked all the open worlds, I've also ranked all the LEGO games. There's an entire playlist there, and you'll definitely find a video you'll enjoy there. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.